So many things have changed here at the channel over the past couple months. One of the biggest changes that we've made is to what kind of equipment that we are using. We've got away from the Rasa and we've gone to something that is proven and is very, very special. My name is Chad. This is the Easy Aster Images channel and we are going to collect some photons today. So some of you on the channel here will be familiar with the good old GT81 that we have been running for quite some time here. She was off to uh, William Optics for a repair, but since she came back, she has been performing flawlessly. This is equipped, of course, with the ZWO 183 camera. Now, I am definitely still a one-shot color type of guy, especially when you could do such awesome things with these filters now, with the Antilia Gold 5 nanometer. Use a thing like Bill's easy drag and drop picks and such stuff, and using the 4X color palette, the Rasa to the Red Cat. Now, you know I had a lot of issues with Rasa. Hyperstar was okay on the six inch. It was still kind of a pain in the neck to just deal with everything all the time. So I'm pretty much in refractor heaven right now. So of course we have changed to the Red Cat 51, got it all set up with the two inch filter wheel, ASI Air, all that fun stuff, and the 2600 MC Pro. Now I was gonna go mono, I'm already prepared with the two inch filter wheel and everything, but really just did not want to spend the money at this this point on it and I am having just a fantastic time with these two rigs especially this one right here now I did own a 2600 back maybe a year or two ago and sold it to fund some other projects so it was nice to finally get back to like a larger type of sensor I cannot understate just how much more impactful and how much more just fun you will have using a larger sensor and a new generation sensor as well which even though the 2600 is out for you know a couple years now along with its smaller version of the 533 and now they've got the big boy 6200 that's out the full frame you just masterpiece of a camera but combining the old Red Cat here along with that camera and being able to collect some large wide field targets with just like barely any noise off these cameras is just amazing. So it's a very, very important thing to think about when it comes to your purchases, dollar for dollar. All else things being equal, we're looking at like $1,700, $1,800 for the scope and maybe around seven, dollars $800 to the camera. So a $2,500 package. With the Red Cat and the 2600, we're looking at about eight, $900 for the Red Cat, of course, you're going to need a few things to go with it, and then another $2,000 for the 2600 Now, it's really crazy when we talk about astrophotography gear and just throw around large numbers like that. But the reason why I do that is because it's a big investment that you guys, myself, are making into this hobby. And getting the best bang for your buck, the easiest way to get awesome pictures like which way is it the rasa was amazing because it was so fast but there's so many things that you have to work around first of all you got to hope that you get a really good sample then you got to hope that all of the adapters that you get are all kind of mashed together and they're all machined perfectly so that way you can avoid things like sensor tilt and everything else and if you want to use a 2600 type of camera on a Rasa, you really have a hard time. You have to go with something like the Octopi. And as great as it is, it is still incredibly difficult to tune. Now, since I had such great success and still am having great success with the GT81, I decided to go with the Red Cat. Small, small refractor, you know, only 51 millimeters, but pets full design sharp images all the way out to the corner with the 2600 sensor nothing that you have to worry about you don't really even have to worry about back focus a whole lot even though most of our cameras zwo require 55 millimeters and when you add up all their components filter wheel, wheel drawer whatever it all kind of comes out to around 55 56 millimeters so you could take it from scope to scope the thing that's great about that is you can just slap that on your red cat and as long as you get focus, you have the perfect back focus distance. On my GT81, it actually has a variable spaced reducer that I have to kind of put out a little bit because in order to get the perfect back focus for that focal reducer, I have to put on the end of that. I have to add an additional like seven and a quarter 
millimeters. So we're coming out to like 62 and a quarter to get those perfect edge to edge stars. So it's a great benefit that you have the ability to like flex around with these refractor type of telescopes, especially the William Optics ones. They've made life so much easier in astrophotography, just so much more enjoyable. I'll show you now like one of the first images that I have completed with my Red Cat 51. I've worked on a few projects. I've shot when I shot, sh shouldn't have shot like you know, in clouds and full moon and all kinds of stuff because, you know, we just want to play with our gear. That's what we do, right? So, but this version of the Lion Nebula that I got just blows me away. I love it. Again, I use a lot of the different cool picks and sight tools that are out there right now, drag and drop, just learning that craft. And when you have all of this equipment that's working perfectly, you can focus your attention on the actual processing side, which is really where all of the magic happens. So here is my final of the Lion Nebula that I shot with the Red Cat and the 2600. I've got about eight hours of uh, just one shot color data into this baby. And you can see just, you know, how amazing it looks. We've got the lion tail right here and the legs and everything. Uh, did a little work in uh, Photoshop with Camera Raw using all the cool stuff like noise exterminator and star exterminator, um, trying to learn a little bit more about noise exterminator and not be so aggressive with it. So that way it kind of brings out the dust a little bit more out in here and turns it like less into a painting. So here is the full screen JPEG view here on the windows machine. And there's a couple other copies you know, there's a starless right there for you. Um, there's uh, that was the before uh, camera raw. That was after the camera raw. And then we have a couple different renditions that I worked on. Uh, this was the pre Photoshop. And then this was after the Photoshop. And, uh, you know, it's just fantastic. There's so much detail in here, even at this like pixel scale, um, you know, the sampling size is a little bit you know, not what people want. You kind of want it, you know, a little bit in that middle, but you know, I could care less. I love having these big sensors. And again, you can take a look at the stars. They just look fantastic all the way out to the corner. And, you know, being able to tame those things down is just fantastic. Um, you can see that, you know, I leave, I like to leave a little bit of grain in the photo just because, you know, that's you, that's what you want. You don't want to like turn this thing into like a complete painting, but, uh, you know, it's just fantastic. If we take a look at uh, the details here inside the nebula, of course, you know, when you zoom in, they're going to blur out a little bit, but, uh, I am super happy with the way that this, uh, this photo turned out. So I hope you guys like it too. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope I could kind of show you and teach you a few things and just kind of give you some advice on how maybe you would want to spend your money when it comes to astrophotography. And if you either have these scopes or you're thinking about them, which way you would go. So let me know in the comments below. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot. Peace.